Will your portfolio hit the road with VinFast's initial public offering? Today, I thought we'd talk about VinFast, the Vietnamese electric car maker that one of these days, not tomorrow, but sooner than later, one hopes, will bring to the market its public stock offering. It's an opportunity for investors to get in on the ground floor of what could be a very exciting competitor in global automotive markets. What is Vin Group? Vin Group didn't start out its business life making cars. It actually is the brainchild of an entrepreneur named Pham Nhat Vuong, and he started his business life, but his business life in Ukraine. He was an entrepreneur, he had a restaurant, then he started making frozen food products, noodles, all sorts of things. And it grew and it grew until today, it's one of the largest private groups operating in Vietnam. If anything, Vin Group is famous for its dried noodles. These were not invented of all places in Vietnam, but in the Ukraine, based on technology that was learned in Europe, in Asia, in Russia, all over the world, brought to market first in Ukraine, later repatriated to Vietnam, and from the noodle business grew real estate, smartphones, all sorts of investments up and down the country of Vietnam. But in the later phase, it expanded in what's called VinFast, which is a car company. The initial operations of the Vin Group, the noodle business, mashed potatoes, whatever, I would call it freeze-dried foodstuffs, were packaged together, sold globally, and taken over in 2009 by Nestle, the Swiss corporation, which paid about 150 million US dollars for this division of Vin Group. That enabled the group to redeploy its capital into more upmarket investments such as real estate, smartphones, and later on a car company. Mr. Vuong returned to Vietnam about 2001. I think he was traveling a lot before that, but he, he returned his base of operations to Vietnam after 2001 and started branching out, as we said, into real estate, into hotels, into other financial investments, more than just the food business, which was sold off to Nestle. And that enabled him really to develop into what became Vietnam's first billionaire. Vin Group is the name of the ultimate holding company, but where is this company really located? I think from our point of view, it helps to say that it's centered on Vietnam, but that would be somewhat misleading. The company in the initial public offering, if it comes to market, would be located in Singapore. So it would be under sort of SEC, Western US, accounting regulations. The car company itself has several bases of operations. It took over General Motors in Hanoi, near Haiphong, which is the port city, and the, some of the outlying islands in Halong Bay, actually, where many people have visited, is where the new car company has its operations. And there are even operations of the Vin Group a setting up in North Carolina and the United States. So truly a multinational group. The Vuong family obviously is one of the richest, if not the richest family in Vietnam. Estimates of its wealth range between about 1.1 billion and two, three billion. I think it's very hard with private fortunes for magazines, even reputable ones such as Forbes, to actually really understand the net worth of an individual. Be assured that the, that the owner behind the Vin Group is himself a wealthy man. For our purposes, we wanna focus a little more now on the development of the motor vehicle, the car manufacturing division of the Vin Group. How did it get going? It got going initially by taking over the operations in Hanoi of General Motors. It now is the exclusive distributor of Chevys in Vietnam, but that also will allow it under a General Motors license to manufacture a very economical, small, but professionally made global vehicle. The sizzle on the stake, so to speak, of Vin Group's car investments comes with its electric vehicle manufacturing ideas. These are based in North Carolina, which is a southern state in the United States, and it gives 
Vin Group, under the VinFast label, corporate brand, an entree into one of the biggest, if not the biggest motor vehicle market in the world. In terms of, of numbers, VinFast as a car manufacturer is a new, new kid on the block. This is not General Motors, this is not Ford, this is not any of the brand name companies, Honda, that you know about in your travels in your life. This is a very small producer of vehicles. I would say they're high quality vehicles. At the same time, the numbers, they made a luxury SUV that was not electric, that was gas operated, but we're talking a production run in the luxury end of the market of about two, 300 cars initially. In the last few years, VinFast has been selling about 20, 30,000 cars per year made by in its factory near Haiphong. Obviously, the, the global recession and the global pandemic have slowed down some of VinFast's plans for its initial public offering. At the same time, it has allowed it to, to ramp up operations manufacturing. Again, this is on a small scale, but the point of the manufacturing is to show the world, and especially the IPO market, that it's capable of manufacturing high quality, professionally made, economic, well-engineered automobiles. What happens in an initial public offering? Essentially what will happen is that the holding company will offer for sale, let's say 10% of the stock in the company based on an assumed valuation as if the whole company were worth X in the public markets. In this case, what VinFast would like to do is come to market based on a valuation of $60 billion. Well, that's a big number, even for a global group such as the Vin Group and for cars as well made as VinFast. Let me put that in perspective. That's the valuation today of the Ford Motor Company which makes about 4 million vehicles a year. So VinFast makes about 30, 40,000 cars a year, and it's hoping for a valuation based on the number of 60 billion. So it's a, it's a reach, and the valuation number is gonna determine whether you, as a potential investor in the IPO, will make money or lose money. There's no reason that Vin Group, Vin Fast, shouldn't want as much money as it could to sell, say, 10% of its stock. What would it do with two to three billion if it raised it in the public markets? Well, obviously, it would invest in its electric EV, electric vehicle manufacturing processes in the US, around the world, and compete with names such as Tesla. What's the Tesla valuation today as we speak? It's about a trillion dollars. If Ford was valued the way Tesla is valued, based on the comparable figures, Ford would have a valuation of $8.4 So there's a huge disparity between how markets value automotive manufacturers, especially older ones, GM, Ford, and the newer ones, Tesla. Obviously, VinFast would like to be valued in the neighborhood of a new company such as Tesla. What are my thoughts on the VinFast IPO? It has not come to the market. We don't have the pricing. This is all speculation and it's my personal speculation. I think it will not get 60 billion based on the valuation. I think that's too rich. If they get it, good for the owners, probably not as good for the investors. I think that probably the valuation, they're probably going to have to go look at 20 to 25 billion, itself a large number for a company that is so such a small run of production. These are well-made cars. The trick for you as an investor in looking at an IPO is to decide whether that valuation is realistic or too rich. If it's too rich, you have to let it go. If you see an opportunity to get in early and to be behind a company like VinFast as it develops and penetrates markets in Asia and the United States, it could be an excellent investment. That's all the time we have today on The Investment Advisor. I'm your host, Matthew Stevenson, in partnership with Dukas Copy TV. Remember, money can take care of you. It cannot take care of itself.